topic for the night is if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do so let's go to psalm book of psalms psalm 11 verse 3 Psalm 11, verse 3. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Everybody got Psalm 11, verse 3? Ready? Read. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So, buildings need foundations. Buildings are built on foundations. Now, the foundation holds the structure. The foundation determines the type and the strength and the size of the building. So the foundation is very important. So everybody have notepads? I want you to put, um, we're going to look at our family tree. I want you to put, father on the left and I want you to go way over and put mother on the right and we're going to make a list we are going to list um, every pattern that we see following our bloodline on our father's side and every pattern repeated uh, following on our mother's side for example we have aunts, we have uncles, we have cousins. We also have siblings. What do you see that is common on your mother's side of the family and on your father's side of the family? I'll give you some example of what I wrote for my own. On my father's side, I have divorce. I have smoking, I have drinking. I have children out of wedlock. I have children um, while married with another relationship. I have on my mother's side, I have some more listed, but on my mother's side, I have married late. I have high blood pressure. I also have um, children out of wedlock. So follow your mother and family's father's side and list everything that's common that you see being repeated by anyone, your parents, your aunts, your uncles, from your, your mother's side, your father's side, your cousins. What you, what's the trend you see in your family? Let's trace our tree. Everything. If you want, you can put a name on the side of it. If you want, because I know a lot of these is more than just one person.
mental. Mental illness. Now, I know you can leave some space because I sure you all got water right. I want you to put me, me, and then I want you to look at both of those lists and put what all fall on you. But like right now, or in the past, in the past, and now. I can name off some spirits and I want you all to put it I want you all to see if any of these pertains to you anti-marriage delay infirmity uh, it's going to be on, by you okay on the side of you anti-marriage delay infirmity only if they affect you though. Poverty, anti-progress, progress, anti-progress. Harlotry, harlotry, harlot. If you bad. H A R L O T R Y. Harlotry. If you speak up. What do you put in you? Well, and yes, put in you want if you see it in your family. Because uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, I have some more than children. Yeah, harlotry would be someone who can move more around a lot. A lot of partners. Spirit of heaviness. Spirit of heaviness. Mm -hmm. They got that depression when they see one in the family. Mm -hmm. Spirit of lying. There are some people that can tell a lie. Mm -hmm. They good at they good at that. Now, oh, I'm still right here. Yes. Now, that's a serious list. I show everybody got a long list. A long list. On both sides of my family, and I noticed, like on, from my mother and father's side, ain't much men, I think none, ain't much men to college. College, no college. No college. They work hard on both sides of my family. Both sides, hard workers. Hard workers. But yet, low middle class. 
low middle class. Or poor. And they work hard. Work hard and still haven't achieved nothing in life. Spirit of poverty. When God gave me this, um, it's basically everything we have covered from last year up to now. With it being delivered and set free because we have to be totally delivered and set free. There is no bondage that God has called us to be unknown. No. So we can go through all of this tonight because we need to know if there's still any curse or any covenant still on over us. We're still under it. So that's the reason why I had you to put that there for you to see exactly what's going on. Um, this right now uh, would be less was if we broke them off if we broke them off and we are living a sin free life then the covenants with, um, that we broke would have been poverty infirmity that I remember um, delay, backwardness, hindrance and time marriage because we, we did the spirit spouse anti-marriage we did that from what I remember um, I don't know if we did um, harlotry mm-hmm. and like I said I run my family I don't remember breaking that um, the lion spirit ain't much but still there kind of the light but there mm-hmm. some people got it bad and mm-hmm. I remember breaking that you know um, spirit of jealousy, um, spirit of heaviness, I'm too sure. Mental illness. Right, so these are all covenants still. If you list any of these on either side of your family, we could denounce and renounce them after, uh, at the end of the night, okay? And this is the reason I had you to write down everything that what you remember. Um, deaf and dumb spirit, we could, we could also, um, if that's in the family. Spirit of pride, deaf and dumb spirit. Spirit of pride. Some of these I don't remember. Break in. So we need to make sure to cover everything. Um, because if we ain't really name them, we could go back into them, don't even know. So, write it all down. Make sure you ain't miss none. So that we could denounce and renounce them um, during our fast, which will start midnight tonight. Um, this is for God to really search us. It's our time now to get everything out because our fast is going to be destroying everything that we have left out, what um, we might have overlooked. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Well, we got to dig it up, eh? It has to be dug up. Our foundation was set not by us. <coughs> our foundation is set uh, via our family tree. Yes. Our family tree. The ones who, and I'm sure ain't much of us have much success listed here in our family. Hmm. Middle class, a low middle class, not even high middle class. If you can't find, if if you have a bank account or bank accounts, and you don't have a thousand on it, mm-hmm. man, you in poverty, man. Poverty. You in poverty. So we have to do it God's way in order for us to live under the blessings that God has already given to us, we have to destroy. The foundation has to be dug up. We have to destroy every curse. Every curse. Curse is the penalty levied for sin and iniquities. 
So we have to destroy all the curses. We have to ask God to remove them. We have to break them and ask God to remove them off of us. Because we are, once, we, once we was sinners before we were born again. And so we was under a bunch of curses. A bunch of curses um, that we was under. And if we haven't addressed those curses properly and asked God to, if we didn't break them and ask God to remove them, then a lot of them still in play because half the time we're probably still doing something wrong. We are still doing something wrong that would have, have us still locked or in bondage. So we're trying to rewrite our family history. We don't want this to pass down on our children's children, children, children. Someone have to destroy it, break it, cancel it, null and void it. Yes. Someone have to do it correctly. Yes in order for you for us to see change and to see positive change we're not running after money we're running after the life god has given to us he didn't give us a life of poverty it's all true worth. wealth and riches shall be in your house i give you the power to get wealth so you're not running after money you are breaking curses that has been levied on you or curses that we brought on ourselves. So we are getting rid of the penalty for sinning. That's all we're doing. We're getting rid of the penalties because Jesus, God told us what will happen if we commit sin, if we rebel, if we um, worship other gods other than, um, other than him. If you put anything or anyone before him, so we have to now ask God to rebuild our foundation. It has to be rebuilt. A lot of us, I think, half our foundation was built. We give all to God half. We ain't give him the whole thing. We have to get to the bottom of everything. So by the end of the night, we should have touched on everything. Pertaining to generational curses, evil covenants, evil altars, uh, curses from our ancestors, and curses that even we are doing or have done. So we can deal with all of that. And if you have any questions, this is going to be the night to bring up the questions. Because we have to do it God's way. We have, have, have to. Um, in order for God to rebuild our foundation, we have to follow his word. In order for us to see change, in order for us to see this negative list turn into good, this curse list, I should say, turn into the blessings that God has for us, the covenant of blessing, then we need to make sure the foundation is rebuilt and we do it God's way. And it's the only way it will last. The only way it will last. A lot of things, uh, and Keisha said, was there have been changes, and I sure you have seen some changes. I have seen changes. Since I denounced and renounced, I have truly seen changes. I haven't seen the fall down, but I have seen changes. I have seen, I have seen growth. I have seen increase, especially with wisdom and, and, and understanding. God has truly been giving it to us. And the word of God says, get wisdom. It is better than silver, gold, rubies. It is it's the best thing to get. He said, all are getting, get wisdom, get understanding. We need it. Because once we have it, nobody can't take it from us. Once we learn to do this correctly, then we can help others. We can help our friends. We can help our families. We can stand on the word of God knowing that it is so. We will have the faith that we need to move the mountains. That right now is still in our way. So we will... Uh, in God's word, in God, uh, tonight, get it in, in the name of Jesus. We have to. All right, so now we figure out what some of the choices that was on our bloodline, on mother's side and father's side of the family. We put some there what was affecting us, and we have some there what might still be affecting us. There's still a little infirmity, but I didn't pray it off. I'm waiting on the manifestation. Um, Manifestation is what I'm waiting on. Manifestation is what you're waiting on. But we want to make sure that nothing is holding up the manifestation. Via a curse might still be there. 
that we are still under. So we have to address every, every curse. And the only way we know to, uh, to address these curses is if we really search the, might not know everything our ancestors did, but if we followed closely our bloodline on our parents, both our parents, our side of the family, we could get pretty close to what they were doing. And a lot of these curses came to um, worshiping other gods. Idolatry. So, we have to ask God to rebuild our foundation. We have to obey his word, every single word. Have, have, have to. Turn to Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5, verse 7, 7 through 9. Everybody know? Deuteronomy 5, verses 7 through 9. Ready? Read. Thou shalt love the gods beside me. Thou shalt not make any or any likeness of anything or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, for I am a visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Hate him. Hate God. So, We have to obey God's word. It's, there is, I can't stress that enough. Thou shall have no other gods uh, before me. We go wrong when we trust in us. We go wrong when we trust in our paycheck. We go wrong when we trust in, in our parents. We go wrong when we trust in anything and everyone other than God. When we do that, what does Jeremiah 17 say? We, you gotta remember, let's turn to it. <laughs> Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah, you're yeah, 17 and 5, she laid them during them. <laughs> Ready? Read. Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man, and make it flesh his arm, and whose heart depart from me. He shall be like a heathen in the desert, and shall not see him in God's coming, but shall in the wilderness. So when we break God's law by trusting in man, the law we break is thou shall have no other gods before me. We break that because if God gonna put a curse on us for trusting in us, then that means we have to do something wrong. If trusting in us and depending on our own strength was right, why would God put a curse on us? Satan ain't bringing the curse now. God is bringing the curse. If depending on us solely us 
and not trusting God with us, trusting God with our concern, trusting God with our situation, trusting God with our families, trusting God with our job, trusting God for our daily bread, trusting God for our transportation, trusting God uh, to protect us, trusting God to make a way for us. Then, God is not our God. We have another God. And it ain't God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. God ain't our God. Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man. And like I tell Rochelle earlier today, I said, this seal it for me. This seal it for me. This seal it in me, for me, when it come to me, trusting me with me, trusting me with everything that concerns me. This seal the deal. Because if we really understand what God is saying here, when he say, we will see no good thing, then we can see no good thing as, as followers and believers of Christ. We can see nothing good. And then we can say, God ain't hear our prayers, God ain't answer us. And then we get discouraged. No. They seal it for me. So, it caused me to change my prayers. It caused me to change my prayers. Because now, our church name, where God is first ministry. God should be first in our life. But if you trust in you, God ain't first. If you trust in your own strength, in your salary, in anything other than God, then God ain't first. So we're breaking that, that commandment. Thou shall have no other God beside me. So then what we're doing, we're committing um, sorcery, witchcraft, because we have an idol. We have an idol. When we break this, we are now keeping the penalty of all these things we listed under our father and our, and our mother bloodline. What we got there? Divorce. Um, children out of wedlock, drinking, smoking, cancer, high blood pressure, hard working, get nowhere, for, um, 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 get nowhere, uh, no college degree or no college, and the list go on. When we break this by trusting in us, we now continue these same curses, covenants on our children. And our children, children, children. Because this is idol worship. You don't get no plain than that. This is idol worship. No good thing will you see. This shows some of the or well, some of the curses that God say will fall on us when we break his commandments. That sealed the deal for me that day. He gave me this. It sealed the deal. I can't bend on me. I can't trust in me. I have to, as Proverbs 3 says, so let's turn to Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. Three and five, everybody there? Ready, read. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Trust in the Lord with what? With all thine heart. With all thine heart. It didn't say a part of it. We don't just trust Him in the hard times, we don't just trust Him when things are going good. We just slack off. We trust him with our whole hearts. 
We trust him with everything that concerns us. God have to be God. God have to be God. God have to be God. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. Going over to Deuteronomy 6. We are commanded to put God first. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. We're going to read 5 down to 8. So that's Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 8. Everybody there? Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 8. Ready? Read. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words shall I command this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them to thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou liest down, and when thou liest down, and thou liest up, and thou shalt have any sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as trumpets between thy hands, and thou shalt not turn aside from them. Amen. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thine soul, and with all thine might. You want to see a soul, Lord Christian? Anyone that follows Deuteronomy 6 and 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thine soul, and with all thine might. That's you giving God back the whole of you. That's you trusting God with the whole of you. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all with all thine heart, I leave it nothing out. With all thine soul and with all thine might. That's a command. If we're not doing this, then we're breaking that command. If we do this, then we should see blessings. If we break this, then curses automatically come. Automatically come. So, we have to ask God to rebuild our foundation. We have to obey God. Once God rebuilds our foundation, we have to now ask God to show us every curse. We break a lot of covenants, but I'm sure we noticed that there's still some we didn't mention. It's good to mention them. You call him. Ask God to lose your destiny. Our destiny has been stolen from birth. Because the life we're living is a life of penalty. Because of iniquity is via our ancestors. Because we all are living under, we can see, we can see the results. So there's no doubt about it that our destiny has been caged. So we now have to ask God to lose our destinies, restore us back to our original, to catapult us to where we should be in life right now. That's getting rid of the spirit of delay and backwardness that was placed on us. Because if we look back, if we look at our age, where we should be, there's no doubt there's a spirit of delay. It's been in our life. All of us should be further than we are now. Further than where we are now. 
No good thing will you see because of curses. We have to pray and faith believe in. Only God can rebuild that foundation. We can no longer afford to live under curse. We, the body of Christ is getting tired, weary, falling away, simply because we lack knowledge. We lack knowledge. It's that simple. We lack knowledge. We are now at a disadvantage because we're born in sin shaped iniquity. We are at a greater disadvantage because of all of the penalties levied on us. Because of iniquity is um, through our ancestors. And we don't even know if I go back. So, there, is, there are curses that has to be broken. Denounce, renounce, and ask in God to remove them off of us. Curses are brought on us by God. God brings them. He allows them to come because of iniquities or sin in our lives. Once we ask God to rebuild our foundation, um, loose, ask Satan to loose and take our destiny back and, t- and ask God to restore us back to our original and to catapult us. Our original means before any penalties was levied on us. Before our destiny was stolen, we have to ask God to take us back to our original. And that now only God can take us to where we should be in our life. That we do not continue to lose out on all that God has for us. So the foundation has to be totally rebuilt by God. So we start by saying, God, show me me. Show me me. We have to ask that question. Because if there's any curse on us, God will show it. If there's anything we're doing wrong, God will show it. If we're walking in ignorance, God will allow light to come. Whatever, whatever is going on in our life and it's not what we feel should be, then we need to ask God to show it to us. We have to. Show me me, God. Show me if I am still under a, a, a curse or any more curses. Show me the curses, Father God. Show me me. What else is there? Is there anything else? And God will show, but we have to ask. We have to ask. We are the body of Christ. Jesus being the head. So if Jesus is the head, where will the body go? With the hand. Yes. 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 Jesus is the head. We are the body. That means who's in control? The head. The head. Jesus. The head is in control, but the body won't run things. The body can't run things. The head got to run the show. The head have to run the show. This is where we lean not our own understanding. By allowing Jesus to be the God of us, to be in charge of us. Every move we make, every decision that we're getting ready to make or take should be confirmed in God. Everything we do should be in God. Remember the tree circles? We are in God. God is in us. We are in the Father and the Father is in us. So where we think the body run things? Body don't run things. But we have been running things for so long we even didn't know what we're doing and that we are out of order. We are not following the laws and commandments of God. We have to surrender our will totally to God. Totally to God. It's only in surrendering our will to God that Jesus becomes the head of us. It's only in total submission, surrender to God. Totally. That we see 
God fully move and operate in our lives. We have to surrender our will to God. We have, and I'm sure you heard the term before, sold out. No, we can't be sold out. We are owned by God, so we need to just let him take ownership. We have to let God take ownership of us. He needs a vessel. He calls us his temple. So if God called us his temple, then how we get us a judge? How we take we own us? How we take we are own? If we are God's temple, we have to give God what is rightfully his. There is order in God's kingdom. There's even order in Satan's kingdom. Nobody runs Satan's kingdom other than Satan. Nobody runs God's kingdom other than God. So how we figure we could run God? How? We rule children. We disobedient children. We don't listen. We want it our way. Because that's what we've been taught. And that's what keeps, that's what, that's what kept us in bondage, in deep bondage, in strong, strong, being operated and controlled by strong men. So we have to pull them down. We have to ask God to burn up and destroy every evil altar that is still erected. We have to learn to trust God in everything. Trusting God will get us to where we need to be, where we desire to be. It comes by fully trusting God, obeying his every word. Just keeping those two commandments that Jesus gave to us shows that we are keeping his word, loving the Lord thy God, and love it in neighbor. If we keep them, we do them, then we will truly rewrite our family's history and start a brand new family tree that lives under the covenants that we've made our ancestors, which is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, made uh, with God. Then we will see those blessings start to follow us. We will see the breakthroughs that we are looking for materialize. And the only way we can do that is truly surrendering to God and allowing God to be God in every area of our life and not just giving him pieces. Give him the peace that we want. Giving him the peace, the pieces that we want. When we start to see breakthrough, distractions start to come. When we start to see turn around, distractions come. Why? Satan wants to derail us again. He wants to cause us to now do foolishness to bring a cup of curse back on us. In order for us to know what's pending for us, we have to stay in God. Our smarts can't be compared to Satan one. So we have to stay in God. We have to stay in God. We have to stay focused and keep our eyes on God. Because we are still in a fight. We will always be in a fight. It's that simple. God called us to be soldiers. So we are in a fight. Daily, constantly going. Constantly going. So how do we trust God? To trust God, we have to give God everything, every day. How to trust God? Number one, give God everything, every day. That's your cares, your concerns, your children, your home, your business, your job, your career, your family, your future. We know the list. 
Give God everything, every day. Give God you. Give God every single thing. Number two, let God figure it out for you. Let God figure it out for you. Now that you didn't give him everything, you let him figure it out. Let God figure it out for you. His way is the best way. Let God figure it out for you. His way is the best way. Number three. Be patient with God. Number three, be patient with God. He is God and not you. Be patient with God. He is God and not you. He moves in his time, not ours. He moves in his time, not ours. Be patient with God. He is God, not you. He moves in his time, not ours. In other words, don't get anxious. Don't be impatient. When we give it to God, let's let him figure it out. Number four, talk to God from your heart. Talk to God from your heart. Be real and truthful with him. Talk to God from your heart. Be real and truthful with him. Be real and truthful with him. This is prayers. This is how you pray. Number five. Talk to God about everything. Don't hold nothing back. Talk to God about everything. Don't hold nothing back. Don't hold nothing back. Number six. Tell him what he means to you. Tell him what he means to you. How you feel about him. And if you can't put in the words and go to the Psalms. David have a lot of Psalms there. Tell him what he means to you. How you feel about him. How you feel about him. And if you know words come and go to the Psalms, there's a lot of Psalms in there with you. You'll think you right on. And lastly, end by thanking God for answering your prayers. And by thanking God for answering your prayers. Any questions? Everybody get everything? Okay. So, let's go over these covenants now. Go back to your list. Go back to your list. 
So let's denounce and renounce any of these curses. Um, is there any anything y'all have written on your list that I didn't call that you think there's not a spirit was called for? Mm hmm. What's that? Come, bring it. Let me see. All right, so fine. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this will come under this will come under infirmity. Mm -hmm. Wow. This will come under Okay, so this will be Well this this actually this bring this bring bondage. This actually brings all of this. Okay? So that's so, why we have to not be disobedient then. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, okay. this is this is actually this will be everybody then. This will be like everything we miss here. So Okay. Yeah. So this is good. Okay? Uh -huh. This will come on in front of you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this rejection. So, now you're the so um, did I call spirit of rejection? No. So put that down too, in because spirit of rejection. Um, we can put spirit of bondage also. Okay, so we're gonna. Because we cancelled, we denounced, renounced um, slavery, didn't we? Yes. Okay. Should I you any more on that? Any other question? Anybody else have any more lists that we didn't call? All right, so this will go under. This will go under. Okay. Um, this will go under bondage. This will go under bondage. Rejection. Okay. Um, poverty. Health. This will go under. Put this under bondage as well. Okay. This could, this this could go under. Um, I can, we can put that under, yeah, okay, good, good, what else we actually put on, yeah, did I give you all, um, I gave you a hollow tree, yes. perversion, no. spirit of perversion, Um, Jezebel, Jezebel is a controlling spirit. You have that, then you could put that there. Um, yeah. Fooling around too. That's fooling around too, yeah. Yeah. All right, it's confrontational. So that that come under jealousy, spirit of jealousy, because if you always got something going on. Yeah, you always got something to say. Yes. 